गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन मैं सभी पार्टिसिपेंट से रिक्वेस्ट करता हूँ कि जो अपने माइक्रोफोन है कृपया म्यूट पे रखिए ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू कीप देयर माइक्रोफोन ऑन म्यूट सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन इंडियन नर्स हेलमेंट एसोसिएशन ऑर्गेनाइज सीड्स फॉर फ्यूचर वेबिनार सीरीज में मैं सचिन रामबनकर इंडियन नर्स हेलमेंट एसोसिएशन की ओर से आप सभी का तहे दिल से स्वागत करता हूं आज का जो हमारा वेबिनार का टॉपिक है दैट इज ऑन टिश्यू कल्चर एंड इट्स फ्यूचर एज वी ऑल नो दैट द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द टिश्यू कल्चर इज इंक्रीजिंग डे बाय डे एंड इट्स हैज वेरी गुड फ्यूचर प्रोस्पेक्ट्स सो उसी को लक्ष्य में रखते हुए आज के जो हमारे सहयोगी ऑनलाइन आउटरीच पार्टनर है नर्सी लाइव उनके सहयोग से ये वेबिनार हो रहा है एंड इट इज स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय द रजत निशान बायोटेक सो आई वेलकम और टुडे स्पीकर डॉक्टर नागा भूषण के नायडू ही इज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी धारवाड़ मिस्टर संजय वाइगल फाउंडर एंड सीईओ ईश्वर बायोटेक प्राइवेट लिमिटेड मिस्टर विनोद सोनी ओनर एंड रजत Nishit Biotech and our extreme guest of today's webinar, Dr. Shivlal Shukan Shukla sir from BCIL. So I welcome all the speakers on behalf of Indian Nurse Hilmen Association. I also welcome all today's participants, those who have joined with us in today's webinars. So I welcome him, all them, and I request uh, Mr. Manjit to give a review of. Activities done by the Indian Nurse Hilmen Association during the tenure of Mr. Y. P. Singh sir. So over to you, Manjit ji. Thank you, Sachin sir. <coughs> My screen is visible to you, sir. Yeah, your screen is visible. The PPT is visible to you. Yeah, people is busy. Full screen. Full screen. Full. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sachin sir. I Manjit on behalf of Indian Nurse Hilmen Association welcome everybody on board. All the participants present today, speakers and our sponsor. Uh, before taking the uh, details about Indian Nurse Hilmen Association, uh, I'll speak about our founding president, Sri Arjun Das Agarwal sir. So the Indian Nurse Hilmen Association was founded by our uh, first founding president, Sri Arjun Das Agarwal, which. Uh, So, Mr. Agarwal founded the Indian Nurse Hilmen Association in the year 1987 from a very small place called Kathal in Haryana. From there, the journey of Indian Nurse Hilmen Association has started. If we talk about our leadership board, uh, the first president, late Sri Arjun Das Agarwal sir, was the president from 1987 to 1995, and now we have the ninth president, Sri Vipi Singh ji, on board with us. So, basically, our uh, ninth president, Sri Vipi ji, took charge as the president on 8th of September 2019. and he is basically from delhi so he owns the north india's largest nursery called green fields nursery and before becoming becoming the president he was also he also served indian nurse hilmen association as treasurer from 2006 to 2008 and then general secretary from 2008 to 11 mr singh is very much instrumental in uh, taking indian nurse hilmen association to a very different heights now uh, now indian nurse hilmen association is going global we'll be talking about that in the later slide if we talk about our current governing council board so we have the representation from across india we have people from delhi we have people from maharashtra uh, we have the representation from andhra pradesh uttar pradesh calcutta haryana tamil nadu raipur and so on this happening which was planted in the year 1987 is now taking a shape we are more than 3700 lifetime members on board right right now of indian nurse hilmen association but we call ourselves as a as an extended family of more than 2 lakh people connected all together with indian nurse hilmen association whether they are from the landscape and the forest industry plant breeders greenhouse and the nursery growers retailers distributors and the landscapers or the 
people from the uh, academical background, whether they are the students, educators, researchers. So all comes collectively and form the family of Indian Nurseryman Association. The guiding principles of Indian Nurseryman Association is basically on the five main pillars. So being the pan-India body of all the plant nurseries across India, it's the first and the foremost responsibility of INA to be the influential advocate. So we keep on doing advocacy at the state level or the central level, wheresoever it is required. We are also the authoritative educators. So we keep on doing a lot of activities uh, for our members and the allied industry people. Uh, our approach is to bring all the stakeholders of the industry at one place. So being having the collaborative ap ap approach across all the industry is the third thing that we basically work upon. Uh, we, are the, we are the supporters of the plant business because at the end, we are the nursery people who are promoting the plant business across India. And whatever activity we do, we basically, at the end, we contribute for the passionate, as the passionate promoter of the healthy and the green communities. Uh, if we talk about the thematic areas of work, so we work on six major thematic pillars, the PR and the advocacy, networking and partnerships, capacity building and study tour, publication and papers, events and exhibitions, research and development. During the COVID time, we have seen what Indian Instrument Association's leadership has done at the national level for the advocacy thing. So Mr. Singhji and the uh, entire leadership of Indian Instrument Association had a immediate call with the Ministry of Home Affairs as well as the Ministry of Agriculture during the sudden lockdown, which was imposed in the last year in March. So that time only they did the advocacy at the national level and uh, they managed to the is continuously uh, I just request every participant to keep the mic on the mute motion. Uh, we also keep on doing advocacy at the national level, whether it is to raise the voice against the proposed nursery act or to do the advocacy with the national horticulture board reviving the confederation of Indian horticulture. So we keep on doing all these kind of activities. Mr. Vip Singh is also very much instrumental in bringing a separate division as FLAR and the Export Council of India. He is into the planning board of the entire operation, which is being done as of now by the Ministry of Agriculture. So this whole arrangement will be out of the APDA structure. And this will definitely be going to support the entire uh, floriculture industry of India, floriculture and the nursery industry of India for doing the business with the Gulf and the nearby South countries. Under the networking and leadership uh, partnership, INA is now going global. We have the presence in Japan, Vietnam, Lebanon, South Africa, Netherlands, Italy, Colombia, Bangladesh. And now we are into Ireland and Australia also, So and Bangladesh also. So we keep on doing, uh, we are getting uh, so many responses from all these kind of uh, international places where they want us to have our affiliation and certain kind of activities with these people. The membership of Indian Nurseryman Association is open. So anybody who is interested to get the membership of Indian Nurseryman Association, they can feel free to write us or call us. Or through our website, indiannurserymen.com slash membership, they can actually get the membership details from there. And is also into publications. So INA publishes its monthly magazine called Nursery Today, which is a very, uh, inter very international standard magazine. So the I'm sure that all the people from uh, our membership are getting the copy of uh, the Nursery Today magazine. If in case they are not getting, they can feel free to write us, call us, or they can download it from our website, indiannurserymen.com slash magazine. And I also published the national directory, uh, which was published in the 2017-18. Now the third edition is due. So hopefully by the mid of 2021, or, uh, by the end of 2021 or mid of 2022, it will be published for the public domain. And is into the capacity building program. So before COVID, we were into conferences, workshops, seminars. Post COVID, we are into webinar. Today we are meeting for the 41st webinar of uh, the Indian Nurserymen Association, which I think it's it's a matter to acknowledge because no other organization in India is doing something so dedicatedly that continuously every Saturday they are putting up a webinar for the members as well as the uh, other allied associates of Indian Nurserymen Association. And is also in, uh, bringing up a very niche project called iLab, which is under the R&D head of INA. So the details about the ILA will be on the public platform very soon. Under the events and exhibition, INA organized Hotty Pro India uh, for two years, 2018 and 19 in Pune, Maharashtra. Unfortunately, 2020 was not possible because of the pandemic thing. We are looking forward for the next edition of the Hotty Pro very soon. Apart from all the regular activities, INA is also taking the social responsibility. So when this whole COVID pandemic thing happened, that time INA raised a fund of rupees, approximately a fund of rupees, 50 lakh rupees and donated to the Prime Minister Care Relief Fund. And during the Kerala flood also in 2019, INA donated a sum of rupees 25 lakh through the Chief Minister's office. 
So this is all from my side, Sachin sir, and then what you. Thank you very much, very much, Manjit ji, for sharing the views of uh, our activities of the Indian Nursery Women Association under the dynamic and leadership of Mr. Y P Singh sir. Uh, just earlier we said, uh, my Manjit ji, this is in forty first webinar, and I proudly said this all credit goes to our president. Mr. Y P Singh Sir and the team of I N A. So special thanks to Y P Singh Sir. जो भी हमारे साथ हमारे sponsor जुड़े हैं, उनका भी बड़ा श्रेय जा रहा है इस webinar series में आज के जो 41st webinar हो रहा है. तो आज का जो हमारा webinar के sponsor है, that is Rajat Nishan Biotech and our online rich partner Nursery Lab. As we all know that the tissue culture importance in india is growing day by day and today we have a expert with us mr naga bhushan k naidu to guide us to give focus on the new technologies and we are very anxiously willing to listen him so dr naidu is an assistant professor department of biotechnology college of agriculture dharwad he has wide experience in teaching he has expertise in genetics cytogenetics molecular biology advances in molecular biology tissue culture techniques in molecular biotech biology etc he is the first international phd student at hongzhong agriculture university yuhan china and awarded by the best phd student at hongzhong agriculture university yuhan china so today we have a very Special expert with us, Mr. Naidu, Dr. Naidu. So I welcome him, him on behalf of Indian Nursery Men Association, and I request him to give his presentation in today's webinar. So over to you, Naidu sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you can you see my uh, yeah, slide? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. It is visible. Please go ahead. Okay. So, um, uh, welcome you all for the today's uh, first lecture. That's tissue culture and its future. So I'm uh, Dr. Nagbushan Naidu, uh, working as assistant professor at University of Agriculture Science, Darwad. And uh, my phone number and email is there. If you have any question, uh, you can contact me anytime. So coming to tissue culture. Uh, I have worked a lot in this from my MSc till postdoc, uh, and uh, after also joining here as assistant professor. So uh, based on that, whatever is my experience, I will try to share with you. Uh, so before I actually go into uh, what is tissue culture and what is the basics of tissue culture and what is the applications and what is the best thing about tissue culture, all that details, I want to give you a simple statistics. Um, so where. In 1994, the first transgenic plant in USA uh, in tomato was uh, given permission to grow in the fields, and also the soybean for herbicide resistance in 1994. So from 1994 till 1996, there was only 1.7 million hectares of area was grown uh, in the world for transgenic plants as such. So transgenic plants. What is transgenic plants and all those things uh, we will learn in detail in coming slides. But for the time being, what I want to highlight here is what is the importance of tissue culture in global scenario. So for that, I give this example like from 1996 to 2018. In 22 years of period, there are in 26 countries around 17 million farmers have adapted to. transgenic plants so from 1.7 million hectares area of transgenic plants in 1996 to 191.7 million hectares up to 2018 is a big achievement that is like 113 fold increase of the area in 22 years so that can be considered as the the biotech crops are considered as the fastest adopted crop technology in the history of modern agriculture so that is the importance of tissue culture so also there are four major crops like soybean cotton maize and canola so these four so these 
four major crops have almost covered uh, with the transgenic plants in the global uh, agriculture field. So like, for example, in soybean, it's 78% of total uh, whatever cultivated soybeans are transgenic uh, soybeans. And in cotton, it's 76% of the cotton grown across the globe is transgenic cotton and maize 30% and canola 29%. So that is the importance of tissue culture. So with this small statistical information of what, how much uh, tissue culture is important, I'm now uh, going to uh, start with the actual tissue culture story. Okay, so before we uh, jump into the tissue culture aspects, I want to give you a little bit introduction about history of tissue culture. So in 1902, uh, German physiologist, uh, Gottlieb Haberland, he started all this uh, for his, uh, uh, interest like he wanted to see like whether uh, whatever the plant sample or any tissue of the plant can it divide it to another cell like that in an artificial condition so for for his uh, uh, interest he started he prepared a solution uh, knob solution and which had more of glucose and peptone so in that media he tried to culture palisade cells and glandular hair and pith cells and he wanted them to divide there, like because he has given the nutrients and uh, he was expecting like they will divide, cells will divide. But unfortunately, the cells did not divide, but they did increased in the size because of the glucose present in the medium. So that glucose accumulated, uh, the starch accumulated in the cells and they just enlarged in the size, but they failed to divide. But that is the uh, first step towards tissue culture when somebody was thinking like, you know, the cells can be divided in artificial condition. So after 30 years, in 1934, there's one more scientist called Roger, uh, Roger Gothret. So he successfully divided cells in artificial condition by providing in several tree species by providing artificial media. So next, I am, I'm just quoting here three, four examples, major milestones in the history of tissue culture. I will not go in. There are so many scientists who have worked and uh, they have brought it to a good uh, sense of tissue culture. But I'm, I'm just concentrating on four more important uh, uh, scientists. So after Gautret, uh, I would consider Murashige and Skoog. Murashige is from, uh, Dr. Murashige is from Japan and Skoog is from France. These two scientists, are the people who uh, developed this medium called uh, Murashige and Skoog medium, which is famous till now. And I think it will be uh, used uh, until tissue culture is there. So this is the media, which is having most of the balance in nutrients, which is very famous in most of the tissue culture lab. We use this media. It's called MS media, Murashige and Skoog media. So then Guha and Maheshwari from India in 1966, they produced the first haploid plants from the pollen grains of Datura. So these are the four milestones I want to tell about the tissue culture. And now we will jump into the definition of tissue culture. So tissue culture as such is, it's, it's not like a, when you have a seed, you put it in the soil and it give, grows into a new plant. That is natural way of multiplying the plants. But here, in tissue culture, what happens is cultivation of an excised plant, any part of the plant, when you cut that and a, a tissue and, and you put it in a nutrient culture medium under controlled environmental condition, that's very important, okay? So when you put any excised plant tissue on a nutrient culture medium under controlled environment condition to cultivate them, means to multiply it, that is what is tissue culture, okay? So in artificial condition with the, nutrient uh, balance in nutrient medium. If you can grow from one tissue or one cell to multiple shoots or multiple plants, that is what is tissue culture. So for, for happening this, there should be something present in the plant uh, sample or plant tissue, right? That is what is the total potential of any plant tissue or plant cell to form into a new entire plant is called potency that is total potential of a uh, cell or uh, the inherent capacity of a plant cell to develop into an entire new plant is called totipotency. I'm just giving some major uh, definitions to understand clearly what is tissue culture. 
Okay, so the next uh, definition I would like to highlight is regeneration. So once you uh, take the explant and then you put it in a, uh, a medium and provide all the artificial required conditions, they form into shoots, roots, somatic embryos and whole plant, etc. So that formation from single cell or from, from a tissue to a whole uh, uh, organelles, that is what is called regeneration. So what is explant then? So any part of the plant which is used for using it as a basal thing for getting the new plants is called explant. The excised plant tissue part used for culturing is called as explant. Some of the types of explants used are meristems, leaf embryo, protoplast, anther, etc. Okay, there are so many you can use from the plants. And then next uh, definition I would uh, like to highlight is callus. So which is undifferentiated and unorganized mass of cells. You may have heard about the callus in the human body also when there is a, a health problem, you can see like, it's like a cancerous growth of the cells. So even when you put an explant in the medium, sometimes they just grow in the, uh, multiply it in uh, multiple numbers. And the bunch of cells together is called callus, which is undifferentiated and unorganized mass of cells. The next is next important terminology is subculture. So the maintaining the callus condition or the shoot condition for are using some part of the callus and inoculating it into new culture to make some more callus or some more shootlets is called subculture. So these are the few terminologies which are uh, very important to understand the tissue culture as such. Hello. Uh, please continue, sir. Next slide. Yeah. Sorry. So okay. So uh, these are the. Uh, sorry, it just distract my laptop. Sorry. Okay. So these are the different uh, uh, explants you can use: shoot apex, node, leaf, internode, cotyledon, roots, root tips, fruits, and axillary branch. Any of these parts of the plant can be used in explant to get a new, completely different plant. And this is the uh, picture of a callus. So coming to the requirements of tissue culture lab. So what we need to make a tissue culture lab. So first is three major things are needed. One is media room, a space for preparing media where you should have a balance, we have pH meter and uh, all the chemicals needed and uh, uh, water bath or whatever required for, for making a media. So that all things uh, need to be prepared in a media room. Next is transfer means once you have prepared the media and you have an ex, your explant, you need to transfer it into the media, right? So that place in the, lamina, uh, the, the room where there is laminar air flows and you transfer your explant into the media is called a transfer room. And once you transfer your explants into the media, you need to grow them in a specific conditions like artificial conditions with the controlled light, temperature and relative humidity so that room is called culture room, an area to grow the cultures. So once you have all these three rooms and then you need one more important place. Like once the plants are grown in the culture room, you, you can't directly put them in the field. So because they are like test tube babies, they're not uh, ready to be exposed to the harsh environment conditions. So to make them ready to go to the uh, field conditions, we need to harden them. So to harden them, we need a shade house or greenhouse condition. So in the greenhouse condition, what happens is we take the plant, plantlets from the uh, test tube or the bottles and we put it in a peat moss and we keep them in the controlled conditions with the uh, temperature control and water condition, everything we control in the greenhouse conditions and we harden them for one week or two weeks and then we transfer them to the field conditions. So that is what is the four major things required for uh, uh, establishing a tissue culture lab. So coming to the nutrient medium required for plant tissue culture. So uh, many different tissue culture medias have been developed but Famous is, as I already told, Murashi and Scoob medium in 1962. They developed a media which is still now is the uh, most commonly used media. 
So what it has, what the, what is the requirement for a, 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 an X plant to grow into a new, completely new plant is mineral elements, like macro elements required like N, P, K, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, and also it needs micronutrients. Basically, you know, this um, Murashige and Scoop Media, how they formulated this, they analyzed the inorganic components in tobacco plants. This, uh, the scientist Murashige and Scoop, they analyzed the whole inorganic components present in the tobacco plants. And based on the uh, formulated, uh, the compound they found in the uh, tobacco plants, they artificially made this amounts of uh, similarly found in the tobacco plants, they made it uh, the concentration to decide how much you need for a tissue culture. So macro elements like NK, NK P, uh, all those things. And in micronutrients, uh, you need a uh, ferrous, manganese, zinc, boron, copper, molybdenum, cobalt, and iodine. And uh, not only mineral elements, we also need some organic compounds like sugars, vitamins, and also myoinostal. So apart from these mineral elements and organic compounds, we also need solidifying agents. So why we need solidifying agents? So if we provide only ma macro elements and micronutrients and some sugars, can it be uh, enough? It will be a liquid culture. So in that, if you put an X plant, it will be submerged and there will be no uh, aeration. So to make the X plants to uh, stand on the medium, so we need something to make it solidify. So we use agar or agarose or sometimes phytogel to make the media uh, semi-solid or even solid so that we can put our explants for regeneration purpose. So is it enough to get give only nutrients and uh, uh, ask the explant or the part of the plants to curve in an embryo or in a somatic embryo or any you know shootlet or anything no it's not for, uh, enough at all because we need plant regulators okay so auxins cytokinins abscisic acid gibberellins and ethylene i think these are the major uh, especially auxins and cytokinins are the major major compounds which decides about the formation of either shoot or root in the tissue culture so if there is no hormones there is nothing in the tissue culture so auxins are uh, helping in cell elongation, cell wall relaxation, increased RNA and protein synthesis, direction of translocation, and prevents abscission, enhanced ethylene production, organ formation, etc. So this is used in root formation usually. And the cytokinins are helping in cell division, cell enlargement, organ formation, overcomes dormancy. So this is most of the time used for shoot formation. So these are the auxins and cytokinins are the deciding factor is based on your objective, what you want to do with your tissue culture. And then abscisic acid also sometimes used for inducing dormancy and uh, gibberellins are used for overcoming dormancy. And ethylenes are used to induce senescence and uh, fruit ripening, etc. So these are some of the plant growth regulators which are, which are used in tissue culture for uh, getting our objective clear. So once we have, we are ready with all this tissue culture media and uh, uh, hormones and everything, very, very important thing in tissue culture, which is a major drawback is to avoid the contamination. You know, because we have provided all the controlled balanced nutrients, which we think like can help the, uh, any tissue of the plants to develop into a new plant, but also, these balanced nutrients are good for the any microbes, bacteria, fungal, virus, anything, you know. So, whatever we are providing in the nutrient medium is an enriched, ready-made food. So, not only plants, any microorganism will like to or will love to grow on them. So, major um, care we have to take in tissue culture and uh, which, is, uh, which is the biggest task in tissue culture uh, establishment is avoiding contamination. So bacterial contamination is there and then fungal contamination is there. So to uh, there are so many different ways. Like if you have explant also you need to sterilize with mercury chloride and sodium hypochlorite, whatever. And then whatever you use glasswares, uh, whatever you're using, you need to autoclave them properly and sterilize them to kill any bacterial fungal presence on that. 
and any other contaminants, we need to take care of all of them to get the successful regeneration. So coming to types of in vitro culture. So culture of intact plants, seed culture, you can use seed as an explant to grow uh, new uh, tissue, new whole plant. Or embryo culture, mature or immature embryo, you can use organ culture, meristem culture, shoot tip. If you are using whatever the tissue, based on that, they have given the name like meristem culture. If you are using meristem as an explant, shoot tip, if you are using an explant, then it is shoot tip culture, root culture, anther culture. And if you are using callus as an explant or initial uh, thing, then you can say it as callus culture. Single cell culture, even you can just take a single cell from a leaf or root or shoot or root, whatever. And then if you provide the proper conditions, <coughs> they will also become into a new plant. And protoplast culture. So we will go to the protoplast culture in detail in coming slides. So for time being, there are, this is one of the types of in vitro culture. So this is, uh, if you are using any somatic cells for getting the regeneration, it's called a sexual uh, progeny. And if you're getting uh, gametic cells for culture, then they're called sexual progeny. So you can use any of these pores, exceptional seeds, embryos can also be used as an explant to get the new plantlets. So this is all about the basics of tissue culture and now the important points, I will come to application of tissue cultures. I think this is the most important part uh, of our seminar, our webinar. So first application is rapid clonal propagation. So what do you mean by rapid clone or clone as such? So plant population derived from a single donor plant is called a clone. And the multiple sorry. Okay. So um, and the multiplication of genetically identical copies of that cultivar is called yeah. can can you hear me, sir? Okay. Okay. So, you are probably audible, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay. So uh, plant population derived from a single donor plant is called a clone. And the multiplication of genetically identical copies of that cultivar is called clonal propagation. So what do you mean by uh, micropropagation or the rapid clonal propagation is once uh, in, in many of the crop species, like for example, in banana or in sugarcane, from a single sucker, you know, uh, earlier before tissue culture, it was the suckers which they used to use to get the multiple uh, uh, plantlets. But now with the small portion of single sucker or from a leaves of sugarcane, if you grow them in the tissue culture, you can see you can get thousands of, maybe 10,000 of sugarcane plants from a single, single, not even they are not using the whole leaves, just a single uh, small portion of this. And from that multiple shoots will come and then you can get at a, at, a, at, a, at a stretch, you can get thousands or 10,000 of plants, depending on the area of your uh, tissue culture lab. Okay, so that is the advantage of tissue culture to get rapid clonal propagation. And also this is not depending on the weather condition. So you, just imagine if you don't have a tissue culture, how you can uh, multiply them uh, in the, uh, without the tissue culture in such a large number, it is not season bound because you are doing it in the lab and everything is controlled. So it can be done 12 months in a year and you know you can, uh, you can have everything in your control. Okay, so that is the main advantage of rapid clonal propagation by tissue culture. So there are so many crop species have been uh, tried to get the multiple shoots. So uh, there is uh, tons of data available in the literature where they have tried and successfully got uh, multiple shoots or the clonal propagation. So coming to the second application, which is uh, soma clonal variation. So soma, what is uh, uh, soma means it's a somatic cells and clones. Just now I explained the clone. It's the uh, identical copy of the parent. So that clone in somatic cells. So whatever variation, you can see in somatic cells, 
that is called somoclonal variation. This is um, a very less chance of somoclonal variation in tissue culture because we provide most of the control, uh, controlled condition, but this is also an uh, uh, application where genetic variation present among plant cells of a culture which can be utilized for getting a different variation, which can be uh, have, have high industrial values. Uh, like for example, in strawberry, you see from the single uh, uh, tissue which they are using for uh, uh, tissue culture, you can see so many variation of strawberry and all of this will fetch you more value for the strawberry. This was the first time found by Larkin and Scrocroft um, and they term the uh, terminology called somoclonal variation. This genetic variability is due to cells of various ploidy levels. So uh, when we are providing all the controlled conditions, still there is variation is mainly because of maybe it's present in that explant which you are using. And also sometimes the different cultural conditions can also induce this uh, somoclonal variation. So for example, in orchids, you can see in the same uh, culture, they, you can see in one tube, it's white color, in another tube, it's pink and mix of white and pink and red. These are all the examples of somoclonal variation, which you can concentrate to make it a, a successful uh, entrepreneurship kind of thing. So this is one of the additional advantage of uh, tissue culture. So coming to the transgenic plants, uh, in the first slide only I explained like it's almost 191.7 million hectares of the global area is under transgenic plants. So once you decide like there is a gene which can control whatever is your objective, maybe like uh, abiotic stress or biotic stress or anything you want to control in the plant, then the best thing is transgenic approach. So a gene that is transferred into an organism by genetic engineering is known as transgene and an organism that contains and expresses a transgene is called transgenic organism. It's also called as genetically modified organism, GMOs, and the transgenes can be introduced into individual plant cells. The plantlets can be regenerated from these cells and these plantlets give rise to the highly valuable transgenic plants. There are thousands of examples, I'm quoting all of them um, uh, in, the, in the coming slides. Okay, so the plantlets can be regenerated from these cells. First, you transfer your gene of interest into a cell, and then you use that uh, um, plant cells for regenerating in the tissue culture media. And once that gene is inserted into the plants, then you get your needed transgenic plant with the where your objective of getting targeted to insects or uh, pests or anything. Okay. So first you uh, source of organism and then you transfer it in from the, uh, through the help of agrobacterium into the plants. And there's another way is by particle bombardment also. You don't need to uh, use tissue culture. You can also transfer that, okay? So uh, Monsanto and Myco company in India, are the first people which acquires biosafety approval for the first generation of PT cotton technology in 2002, which they named Volgard. And they started licensing BT cotton technology to local seed companies in 2004 in India. So then this BioCentury uh, multinational seed company at the Indian Institute of Technology, National Research Institute, start licensing BT cotton technology to the local seed companies in 2006. And Monsanto acquires the Indian patent on second generation of BT cotton technology in the 2009. So now from 2009 to 2015, 95% of the Indian cotton area consists of BT cotton varieties up to 2015, okay? I did not get the recent data, but up to 2015, it's 95% of the Indian cotton area is covered by BT cottons, okay? It's, it's approved in 2002, and from 2002 to 2015, it has covered major portion of the growing area. Similarly, in soybean in 1994, the first genetically modified soybean was introduced to the US market by Monsanto. But in 2014, it is accumulated to 19.7 million hectares of uh, uh, GM soy were planted worldwide and 82% of the total soybean cultivation area. 
So round up, round up ready soybeans are a series of genetically engineered varieties of glyphosate resistant soybeans produced by Monsanto. So here they uh, inserted a gene for having resistance against a weed side. Okay, round up weed side. So that's the third example or application of tissue culture. And fourth example is induction and selection of mutations. So you know mutations, it naturally happens in plants or in animals or wherever. And then there will be a beneficial effect or sometimes even it's not beneficial effect, but you should search for the beneficial effect in the plants. So mutagens are added to single cell liquid culture for induction of mutations. Once your tissues are growing in the media, so if you induce the mutagens in that, and then you select them for whatever is your requirement, then like, for example, tolerance to stresses like pollutants, toxins, salts, drought, flooding, etc., can also be obtained by providing them in culture medium. So you provide whatever the condition, adverse condition you want to create artificially, you create that in the culture medium and whichever the plantlet survives in the harsh conditions, that is, can be selected as surviving healthy cells are taken to solid medium for raising resistant plants. So it's been successfully done in potatoes, like they have irradiated the explants and then they selected the one which is having better quality. Okay. The next application is resistance to weedicides. Just now I gave, quote an example of uh, soybean. So that is another advantage, which is similar to induction. Which is uh, similar to the induction of mutations. Weedicides are added to the culture initially in very small concentrations and dosage is increased in subsequent cultures till they die. And then whichever is the resistant cells are regenerated from plantlets and, uh, re, uh, and grown into the plants. You have in vitro plant, give the mutagens and then regeneration of putative herbicide tolerance mutants and selection on the herbicide. You pro provide a herbicide here and whichever is uh, herbicide resistant, then you can use that plant for further your purpose to grow them as resistance to weedicides. So next application is production of secondary metabolites. So this is the one of the major, apart from transgenic plants, major, another major uh, uh, factor or application or useful uh, from the tissue culture is secondary metabolites production. So this is covering most of the industries, especially pharma industry, is depending on the secondary metabolites produced from the plants and the, the easy way to get the secondary metabolites in a large quantity for the industry or pharma, pharmaceutical companies is by tissue culture. So production of many useful compounds like alkalides, codeine, vinristine, quinine, etc., and steroids, glycosidic compounds, anything you know from the plants, even saffron, you know, can be done by plant cell culture. This end can be achieved by selection of specific cells producing high amount of desired compounds and development of a suitable medium. So first thing is you have to plant, screen the plants for the production of secondary compounds and choice of best genotypes, which is producing, for example, a good amount of uh, steroids. And then you induce callus from that and uh, you subculture them where these cells are producing a lot of steroids and then you look for the genetic stability. Usually stable metabolic production should be there. And once you decide that, you can produce a tons of callus in controlled condition and then screening on productivity in cell suspension culture or on the media, whatever. And then you can use bioreactors to get growth, productivity, and uh, you can use it for selling in the pharmaceutical industry or anywhere. So that is uh, another major uh, useful uh, uh, advantage of tissue culture other than the transgenic plants. So there are many products like for example, rosmarinic acid and uh, uh, you know, from uh, shikionin you know, and anthocyanins. These are so many compounds have been already uh, produced from, by using tissue culture uh, in the industrial scale. So next is somatic embryogenesis and synthetic seeds. So uh, once you have targeted for, you are uh, putting your explant in the, in the tissue culture media, in the nutrient media, and you are expecting a shoot or 
rude but sometimes you know what happens is in instead of directly forming into the shootlets they go uh, a somatic embryogenesis stage maybe uh, you know also non pro embryonic cell of the direct explant or the embryoids developed within the callus tissue from induced embryogenic cells so that is called somatic embryogenesis you can see here uh, once you have put the callus from the callus the instead of they are directly forming into the plantlets you can see they undergo a embryonic stage somatic embryogenic stage here is no gametic cells so but still they will undergo uh, different stages of embryonic stages and then once this embryonic bipolar uh, i mean shootlet and rootlet will be there and once you found this you have to cover them with sodium alginate and then you can use it as a artificial seed or it is also called as synthetic seed it has been achieved in many crop species including papaya and you, you name it and they are, they have tried in different crops okay so what is the difference between synthetic seed and natural seed natural seed there is an uh, uh, fertilization happens but in synthetic seeds there is no fertilization or anything but it undergoes the same stages of forming a seed so that's why once this bipolar nature is formed it's somatic embryo with the shoot and root then you provide the artificial condition to protect them by sodium alginate is the chemical which we use to cover this and these seeds can be directly sown in the field and you can get the plants so there are in many plant species they have tried this and they are successfully uh, uh, established the somatic uh, uh, embryogenesis or synthetic seeds in that like for example it is in um, uh, medicinal plant and uh, pineapple you know they in rice also they have tried and this is in banana so they have tried it different crops for this and they are successfully getting synthetic seeds and this is another uh, major advantage of tissue culture now coming to the breaking dormancy then eighth application when using embryo sometimes you know when we when we uh, get this uh, embryo zygotic embryo they are not always ready to be you know uh, uh, germinating condition so to break that dormancy you what you can do is you just get that embryo and grow them in the tissue culture media and you can get a new plant so this is also you know sometimes embryo abortion you can avoid in un unsuccessful process and then you can use it in the artificial medium condition this is also done in many crop species wherever you know they try the interspecific hybridization or crossing with the wild species the embryo is formed but they are not um, uh, vigorous embryos or they will be having dormancy then tissue culture comes into handy and you can use tissue culture technique to break the dormancy and develop into a new plant so ninth uh, uh, application or the very important uh, another very important application is uh, producing haploid plants so you know uh, diploid is a uh, uh, more stable kind of plants but haploid plants can be obtained through anther or pollen culture for example if you want to um, uh, see like there is a recessive gene which is which you want to maintain in the plant system to see that uh, uh, it can be grown in the uh, bigger numbers with the same uh, uh, recessive gene or recessive trait to be expressed so in that for that purpose i think haploid plants getting from tissue culture is very best uh, uh, the way you can do that many of the recessive traits can be made expressed in double haploid such as low glucosinolate content in brassica they have tried it in brassica uh, and also in salt tolerance and disease resistance in rice they have tried this by uh, developing an haploid plant from tissue culture and also in onion production of onion haploid plants with in vitro gynogenesis okay so haploid plant has their own advantage you can see in fruit trees especially you know the anther culture and haploid plant production has been attempted in many of the crop plants where these haploids are of immense importance for production of homozygous diploid or polyploid lines by colchicin treatment within a very short period of time so there is one more example in uh, tea uh, where anther culture they have utilized to get an haploid plant so coming to the 10th uh, application is somatic hybrids so this is something about the uh, protoplast culture i was talking 
So isolation and regeneration of plants from the protoplast. So what is protoplast? If you take a cell and remove the cell wall, and then that is called as protoplast. The content of the cell without cell wall is protoplast. So what is the importance of protoplast in tissue culture is you can try to cross any you know, uh, interspecific hybridization or asexual hybridization and uh, somatic hybridization. You can try all the, whatever you imagine, you can try because the main drawback of crossing is they don't, um, um, they can't uh, uh, have good combination of uh, different hybridization, but that can be removed in the somatic hybrids. Like when you take the protoplast and you put them together in a controlled condition, then they fuse and then they become fusion between two protoplasts, one partner with nucleus and another partner with cytoplasm. So this is, is an immense importance in the plant breeding program, mainly for, for production of male sterile line or uh, with the help of extra nuclear genome. So the direct DNA uptake through protoplast is the most ideal method of production of transgenic plants also, okay? So you can imagine, like I think everyone have heard about pomato. So what is pomato? I mean, I, I don't think this has been uh, successful, uh, has been, I mean, there's no uh, commercialization of pomato yet, but this is the, uh, you know, imagination, like why don't we have a plant where upper side of the plant, they give tomatoes and in the root, they give potato. So that's why they give the name pomato. Uh, it's not successful yet, but this can be achieved by protoplast culture. You take the cells of tomato and you take the cells of potato and remove the cell wall and then fuse them. It's not so easy as I'm explaining, but nothing is impossible, right? So this is can be done only through tissue culture, not any other technology can give you pomato. That's another application of uh, somatic hybrids. So they have tried this somatic hybrids in the Nicotiana glauca and Nicotiana longsorfi. Um, so, and they were successful to get the combination of these two tobacco species. They have tried to uh, fuse them and they were successful in getting a uh, fused between these two species. So the last application is, uh, this is not the last one. I, I'm just uh, telling some important applications. There are tons of application of tissue culture. And the 11th application is germplasm conservation. So sometimes you can't always get the seeds to store them and conserve them. So sometimes you even don't get seeds or recalcitrant seeds you get. So many of the important crop species produce recalcitrant seeds with early embryo degeneration. So how to store them or how to conserve them? So also many of the plants are vulnerable to insects, pathogens, and various climatic threats. So tissue culture is the, having an alternative solution for conserving these type of plants which have problem with the producing seeds or even if they produce seeds, they are not uh, uh, vigorous. So for that, you can use the tissue culture way. There's one way, plant tissue culture may be applied for this purpose. So in vitro germplasm storage collection provides a cost effective alternate to growing plants under field conditions or nurseries. So what we do is we do it in a cryo preservation of cells and tissues and reviving them once you have uh, uh, need, like you can store them until you don't need to use them. And once you want to use them, you can revival of these uh, tissues and regenerate them and utilize it for whatever you is your purpose. So for example, you take a plant pot, shoot tip, and then you provide all the required uh, uh, conditions like sodium alginate encapsulation of this tip, and then dipping it in sucrose, and then rapid freezing and storing them at 190, one, minus 196 degrees centigrade in liquid nitrogen. And once this can be stored for a long time, and once you decide like you want to utilize this shoot tip, then you can force star them and protectant removal, you can have to remove that and then you put it in the in vitro culture and you can get these plants. So storing these shoot tips in the controlled condition is more easy than storing them, growing them in the field condition and storing them in a field condition to conserve them. So that's the another biggest advantage of uh, tissue culture. So this is a selected list of plants in various forms that are successfully cryopreserved, like cell suspensions in oryzas that have in rice, Soybean, maize, tobacco, 
and Chile, they have tried to uh, cryopreserve cell suspensions. And callus is also uh, cryopreserved or conservation in rice, chili, and uh, in protoplast also, they have tried in uh, uh, maize and Nicotiana tobacco, that is tobacco, and meristems they have tried, zygotic embryos they have tried, somatic embryos, all these things they have already conserved in using cryopreservation technology uh, by tissue culture. So that's the major advantages of tissue culture. I want to tell application of tissue culture. So I have given most of the examples, successful examples where they have used tissue culture for commercialization of so many applications. So what is the future then? So in, in, in Indian scenario or in the world scenario, in global scenario, you see any advance in molecular biology application for field level or industry level, it's completely depending on tissue culture. If you want it in large scale, because you can control them in a small uh, on building, you don't need like um, acres of land to grow them or protect them or produce them. So like that, any advance in molecular biology is depending on tissue culture. Like for example, CRISPR-Cas, everyone says like, you know, in editing and everything, you can do whatever the, you know, you don't want, you can uh, stop uh, expressing them in the plants by CRISPR-Cas or RNA technology. But once you construct the vector, you are stuck there. If you don't have tissue culture method, you can't take them further. So tissue culture is the one which can give you CRISPR-Cas results to the complete result, final results. And pharma company or any industry producing plant products are purely depending on tissue culture for large scale production. Small scale, you can do it in uh, uh, without tissue culture. But if you want it at large scale, you have to depend on tissue culture. And micropropagation is the only way for few crops for multiplying in large number. Like I was giving example of banana or uh, sugarcane and many of the forest tree species are fruit tree species. So you have to depend on the micropropagation as the only way to get thousands of them uh, as a micropropagation culture, okay? And getting homozygous plants, haploid plants is the uh, only can be achieved by tissue culture. So using these uh, major, you know, uh, aspects of the uh, development, Tissue culture can be utilized in any format for industrial development. Any entrepreneur, if you want to develop a new field or you want to get a, a large number of any product, you have to, this is one of the way you can uh, decide like tissue culture can be utilized for getting whatever the results. So successful examples, I will give again, uh, as I already told, like I will uh, give all the list of uh, the examples where they have tried with the different uh, uh, genes transfer, like for insect resistance, they have tried cry gene in cotton and CPT1, amylase inhibitors, you know, in different crops they have tried in maize, GNA gene, and for virus resistance, they have tried in tobacco and in uh, uh, cabbage. And in fungal resistance, they have tried the chitinase gene, they have transferred in tobacco and potato. And in barley, they have tried uh, ribosome inactivating proteins and bacterial resistance. They have tried by transferring lytic peptides, lysozyme, thionine, toxin detoxifying enzymes in tobacco. And coming to herbicide resistance, we know that glyphosate resistance has been tried in uh, uh, Roundup Ready corn and soybean of Monsanto, which is the major. Uh, global uh, economy changing thing, you know, Roundup Ready corn and soybean, which changed the uh, weedicide problem, you know, whenever farmers were spraying weedicide, they, they were killing uh, corn and soybean, but this Roundup Ready transferred uh, uh, with the gene of EPSPS gene has helped the farmers a lot, okay? And then similarly, uh, Liberty Link corn and soybean from Bayer Life Science is also one of the example for herbicide resistance. And they have tried for abiotic stress resistance by transferring beta A gene. You know, you just name any gene and they have tried it in different crops. Source of gene in, uh, you know, sugar halpols, STPD1 gene, they have got from apple and they have transferred it in tobacco. And the DREB gene for uh, um, drought tolerance, they have tried in rice and wheat. This gene, they have got it from Arabidopsis thaliana. 
so and quality improvement also they have tried delayed ripening of tomato this is the first ever transgenic plant i told in 1994 uh, they have tried this uh, flavor saver tomato which can uh, withstand the uh, uh, shelf life for long time so and then also bio fortification with pro vitamin a golden rice for the uh, beta carotene gene into the rice and also bio fortification with iron they have tried it in rice soybean and ferritin and other traits other than these uh, biotech and abiotic stress they have tried is uh, biodegradable plastic gene also they have tried to introduce into the arab stallion and male sterility gene and bio remediation genes so and the secondary metabolites i have already give one list there is on, one more list where they have pharmaceutical companies like anti malarial insecticidal antibacterial analgesic anti cancer anti tumor these are all the secondary metabolites produced from some plant source and using the tissue culture okay so um, i will uh, by saying the same sentence which i told in the first slide i will end my uh, uh, seminar saying like 54% of 21 developing countries area is covered with the transgenic plants and 46% of five industrial countries is covered with the transgenic plants so that itself will tell you like the importance of uh, tissue culture as such in global scenario this is the data from 2018 from isaa so the same tense, uh, sentence i will repeat and i will finish this uh, seminar in 2018 the 22nd year of commercialization of biotech crops 191.7 million hectares of biotech crops were planted by up to 17 million farmers in 26 countries from the initial planting of 1.7 million hectares in 1996 and the first biotech crop was commercialized the 191.7 million hectares planted in 2018 indicates 113 fold increase in the area thus biotech crops are considered as the fastest adopted crop technology in the history of modern agriculture okay thank you so if you have any question please Uh, you are welcome to ask. Thank you very much, Dr. Naidu sir, for sharing a very valuable information with all of us. Uh, your focus on basic of tissue culture, applications of tissue culture, even future of tissue culture, you have shared very nicely in a simple words. So thank you very much once again. Now today we have with us a very uh, guest speaker, Dr. Shukant Shukla sir. I welcome Dr. Shukla sir. Dr. Shukla Shukla has made significant contribution in in the area of biotechnology. Oh, Shukla. I I request all the participants to keep their microphone on mute. सभी participants से मैं दुर्घटना कर दो कि आपने microphone mute पे रखिए. It's my humble request to all the participants. Uh, sorry. Uh, Dr. Shukla Shukla has, sir has made a significant contribution in the area of biotechnology and commercial plant tissue culture. He is a doctorate in biotechnology from Pant Ravi Shankar Shukla University Raipur. Dr. Shukla sir is currently working as the deputy general manager BCIL New Delhi an organization promoted by Department of Biotechnology Government of India. Prior to BCIL he has heading a leading commercial plant tissue culture unit in Central India. He has approximately 20 years of diversified experience covering research production of tissue culture plants field extension quality management biotech parts technology transfer administration and management of biotech projects Dr Shukla sir has more than 50 publications and shared and delivered significant number of and invited keynote speech at national and international forum He has successfully organized more than 30 entrepreneurship development program and conferences Dr Shukla sir is managing prestigious international and national long term projects of government of india which includes indo american indo africa projects on plant tissue culture and national certification system for tissue culture plants in addition to above international and national projects dr shukla is also working with many state governments for setting up biotechnology parks and incubators for promoting startup in biotechnology his more contribution has been acknowledged by the various recognitions and awards including certificate of appreciation from government of chatisgarh west bengal honorary professorship from mit university uttar pradesh rashtriya gaurav award and certificate of excellence from india international friendship society new delhi 
He has played a key role in conceptualizing and preparing the detailed plan for biotech parts for many state governments, which were later approved by the government of India for financial support. So today we have very uh, great speaker with us, Dr. Shukan Shukla sir with us. So I welcome him on behalf of Indian Nursing Association and I request him to give his presentation and uh, we are very anxious to for his keywords in this today's topic. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sachin for this nice introduction. Am I audible to all? You are audible, sir. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Indian Nursery Main Association for inviting me and organizing this very important webinar. So today my participation was just a coincidence. I think next webinar, I would be speaking more on plant disciplature. So I would be very brief today. I will not take much time and I will not eat time of my industry friend. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Vayal is there from Ismet Biotech. Mr. Vinod Soni from Rajat Biotech, Himanchal Pradesh. And being a coordinator of the certification program of government of India, I have been dealing with these people frequently. They're doing a wonderful job. Even we had a very good participation. I could see Dr. Bharti is there from Gromor Biotech, which is doing excellent job in bamboo, disciculture. Dr. Naidu has given all details of the plant disciculture, technology detail, various applications, transgenic. So I will not talk anything regarding this uh, technical part of plant disciplature. So I will Hindi in Hindi because we are nursery ke mitra honge, kuch kisan bhi honge, jo this culture ko thodi si commercial application samanna cha rahe honge. This technology has grown up significantly in India. Jaysay Dr. Naidu ne bataya, ye toti potency Dr. Haberland se suru hoa, to wo sao sal purani baat hai. आज हमारे देश में जो कैपेसिटी है पौधे बनाने की वो 500 मिलियन पर एनम की है मतलब हमारी इंडस्ट्री जो है 500 मिलियन पौधे हर साल तैयार कर सकती है और कहां से चले हम कहां आए देखिए इन वी स्टार्टेड इन 1985 विद द जस्ट 5 मिलियन कैपेसिटी टू प्रोड्यूस स्पाइसेस नाउ वी कैन प्रोड्यूस एप्पल रूट स्टॉक but Rajat Biotech is doing excellent job in Himanchal Pradesh, JNK. And all farmers are benefited. I have seen my own eyes. Farmers are getting healthy planting material, all virus free. And they're getting yield from third year, fourth year. Earlier, what they used to get from 10th year. And the plants are healthy. Each plants are yielding around 35 kg apple fruit. So it has created revolution. And that revolution has come from tissue culture and the entrepreneur like uh, Mr. Vinod Soni, who is going to talk. That's why I not take much time. I would like to listen uh, entrepreneur like Sanjay Vayalji, who is doing excellent work in banana and other crop, and Mr. Uh, Vinod Soni ji. Now, uh, when we talk the tissue culture commercialization, we are the leader. India is the leader in plant disciculture. Many other countries, they are doing well, like Holland, Israel. So technologically, they are doing excellent. But in terms of the volume, we are doing excellent job. And out of that, 70% is only banana. And the banana micro-propagation, pisciculture has various applications. I'll not talk the secondary metabolite. Synthetic seed, but the micro propagation, <laughs> micro propagation, which is the extended form of vegetative propagation, jo up kalam se, sakar se, teen char pode bana sakte, cutting se, das pode, bis pode, you can produce lakhs of planting material in limited time, in limited space. Or uska, up dekhenge total capacity ga, 70% banana hai, kela. और इसने एक रिवॉल्यूशन पैदा किया है कंट्री में जो क्रॉप 15 महीने में 18 महीने में 2 साल में तैयार होती थी ये टिशू कल्चर से हम 1 साल के अंदर ही हार्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं वायरस फ्री प्लांट है और जो यील्ड है वो 30 टू 40 केजी पर प्लांट आ रही बनाना में और कमाल की बात देखिए कि अगर टिशू कल्चर में जो मेजर डिसएडवांटेज है 
अगर आप देखेंगे एडवांटेज भी टॉक्ड अबाउट बट अगर हम देखेंगे जो थ्रेट है डिसएडवांटेज पर थ्रेट है कि इफ यू हैव सिलेक्टेड द रॉन्ग प्लांट व्हिच इज वायरस इंफेक्टेड एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट फॉलोड द प्रॉपर पैकेज ऑफ प्रैक्टिसेस एज एन इंडस्ट्री यू कीप ऑन मल्टीप्लाइंग मल्टीप्लाइंग दोस प्लांटलेट्स इन द प्रोड्यूस्ड बियॉन्ड बियॉन्ड द साइकिल डिस्क्राइब्ड अंडर द स्टैंडर्ड सो देयर इज अ चांस ऑफ सोमा क्लोनल वेरिएशन जो डॉक्टर नाइडो ने बताया कि अगर हम वेरिएंट बनाएंगे तो वो फिर निगेटिव इंपैक्ट आता है फार्मर पे और अगर हम वायरस इंफेक्टेड प्लांट सेलेक्ट कर लिए और हम मल्टीप्लाई किए तो वी विल प्रोड्यूस वायरस इंफेक्टेड प्लांटिंग मटेरियल व्हिच विल गो टू द फार्मर्स फील्ड व्हिच इज वायरस फ्री सो दिस टू एस्पेक्ट इज वेरी क्रिटिकल दैट्स व्हाई गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया भारत सरकार ने एक प्रोग्राम चलाया है मैं चाहूंगा कि हमारे नर्सरी के जो मित्रगण है उसको जाने जिसका नाम है नेशनल सर्टिफिकेशन सिस्टम फॉर टिश्यू कल्चर प्लांट एनसीएस टीसीपी जो हमारी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है बायोटेक कंसोर्शियम ये उस प्रोग्राम को इम्प्लीमेंट करती है कंट्री में अस्सी नब्बे कंपनी उस पर रिकॉग्नाइज हैं और जैसे कि नर्सरी सर्टिफिकेशन काफी सालों पुराना है बट ये टिश्यू कल्चर सर्टिफिकेशन दो में शुरू हुआ इट वॉज टेकन अंडर दीड्स एक्ट देन दिस प्रोग्राम इनिशिएटेड department of biotechnology is the seed certification agency in, for the tc plant and we have various center to certify those tissuculture propagule produced by the indian tissuculture companies so objective is that farmers should get virus free quality tissuculture plant kyunki tissuculture apne aap mein koi miracle nahi hai tissuculture is the copy of the good plant what you select is mother plant you have produced lakhs of plants similar to that plant this plant will be vigorous prototype virus free which will perform good but if proper precaution has not been taken then there would be chance of virus spread viral spread viral kyo important hai thoda main apne nursery friends ko batana chahunga virus symptom will not be seen in naked eye if there is a fungal problem bacterial problem that can be seen at early stage but agar virus ki problem hai that will come to know the later stage when you have done the significant investment in terms of plant in terms of the field in terms of fertilization then entire energy money is wasted so initial screening quality control is very important so i would request my industry friend nursery men to insist for the quality planting material which is tested for freedom from all the viruses so ab zyada samay ab nahi lunga kyunki i could see the time it is 3 around 320 and it still is one hour left so we are two industry speaker we like to listen from them and i would continue to talk on the series of program on the coming event if it is feasible with the nursery men association with this i would stop here thank you so much thank you for the opportunity and we wish you all the best for your endeavor to promote tissue culture technology promote indian farming system promote floriculture horticulture we wish you all the best thank you so much thank you very much sir for sharing your views and guiding us on in today's webinar so 100% we will see you in the next webinar as a principal speaker so thank you very much sir for sharing your views thank you thank Now, you so today much we are, today we have with us uh, rajat nishant biotech our sponsorer so today's sponsor is our rajat nishan biotech and our online dish partner is nursery lives thanks to both so today we have with us mr vinod kumar soni from rajat nishan biotech inke bare mein yes, agar kuch bataya jaye to bahut badhiya cheez hai his grandfather was in uh, working in the gold and silver he was uh, having a jewelry shop his father was teacher and his mother uh, mother was in medical department to do something different he has started to search in 2005 and found tissue culture and tissue culture lab is the good venture for his career and accordingly they have started and shifted into this field and they have started with rajat nishan biotech so we are very anxiously communicate with the vinod ji so i welcome him on behalf of indian nurserymen association and request him
to give his presentation. So over to you, Vinod Kumar Soni, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, थैंक यू इंडियन नर्सी मैन एसोसिएशन का मैं हार्दिक धन्यवाद करता हूं जिसने मुझे ये मौका दिया इस स्टेज पे बोलने का मैं सबसे पहले प्रेसिडेंट वाईपी सिंह जी का जनरल सेक्रेटरी मकुल त्यागी जी का जनरल सेक्रेटरी सचिन ब्राह्मण कार तथा डी चटर्जी जी का हार्दिक धन्यवाद करता हूं और साथ में डॉक्टर शिवकांत शुक्ला जी जो अभी मेरे से पहले बोल के गए तो डॉक्टर शिवकांत शुक्ला जी का भी हार्दिक धन्यवाद करता हूं तथा डॉक्टर नायडू डॉक्टर नागान भूषण नायडू के नायडू जी ने बहुत अच्छा बोला है टिश्यू कल्चर के ऊपर सब पूरी हिस्ट्री बताई है कि क्या क्या टिश्यू कल्चर क्या होता है तो मैं एज ए इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट एज ए इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट आपको आपसे बात करूँगा कि मैं, मैं अपना एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करूँगा कि क्या हमने टिश्यू कल्चर में काम किया तो हम पिछले दो से रजत बायोटेक रजत निषाद बायोटेक में का का हमने स्टार्ट किया था 2005 आर यू लिसन मी हां सोनी सर प्लीज कंटिन्यू ओके ओके तो किसी का हो रहा है तो मैं अभी सामने से बोल दो ऐसा करो सभी पार्टिसिपेंट से दरख्वास्त है कि आप लोगों को पर्सनली म्यूट पे रखिए ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू कीप देयर माइक्रोफोन इन म्यूट सॉरी सर टू इंटरप्ट यू Over to you, sir. Please continue. Sony, sir, please continue. Sony, sir, you have muted yourself. Please unmute yourself. Okay, 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 sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, I started in 2005. We started the tissue culture laboratory start kiya, as a Rajat Nishant Biotech. Ke naam se. तो मैं हिमाचल प्रदेश के डिस्ट्रिक्ट बिलासपुर में हिमालय लैप ऑफ हिमालय में हम ने ये लेबोरेटरी स्टार्ट किया था तो ये नॉर्थ इंडिया में और एक छोटे से विलेज में आ, हिमाचल प्रदेश के छोटे से विलेज में स्टार्ट करना बहुत मुश्किल काम था उस टाइम का लेकिन हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट के सहयोग से डॉक्टर वाई एस परमार यूनिवर्सिटी हमारे हिमाचल प्रदेश की यूनिवर्सिटी है उसके सहयोग से हम ये कर पाए लेकिन बहुत सारी आ, बीच में बहुत सारी परेशानियां भी आई बहुत सारी दिक्कतें आई लेकिन धीरे धीरे करके बहुत सक्सेस किया सर जो हमारा प्लांट एप्पल प्लांट्स जो हम बनाते हैं वो टिश्यू कल्चर के माध्यम से एप्पल रूट स्टॉक बनाया जाता है जिसमें ईस्ट मालिंग स्टेशन इंग्लैंड का रूट रहता है एम नाइन एम एम सीरीज है सर वो एम नाइन एम सेवन एम एम ट्रिपल वन वन जीरो सिक्स वगैरह तो <coughs> ये रूट स्टॉक जब बनाया उसके बाद उसके ऊपर ग्राफ्टिंग की जाती है लेटेस्ट वराइटियों की तो ग्राफ्टिंग करके अभी तो हम गर्म एरिया की वराइटियाँ भी ग्राफ्ट कर रहे हैं जैसे पंजाब हरियाणा आंध्र प्रदेश मध्य प्रदेश गुजरात कर्नाटका वगैरह में हर जगह एप्पल जो लग रहा है हॉट एरिया वाला जो हॉट क्लाइमेट में सूट करता है तो वो प्लांट भी हम बना रहे हैं टिश्यू कल्चर के माध्यम से हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटेशन में तो साथ के साथ पूरे हिमालय में जे एंड के हिमाचल उत्तराखंड अरुणाचल तथा आ, साथ के आ, ये ठंडे एरिए तथा गर्म एरियो में भी ये प्लांट बना करके हम दे रहे हैं तो हर साल पाँच लाख प्लांट हम बनाते हैं सर और एप्पल में पाँच लाख प्लांट बनाना एक ह्यूज अमाउंट एक ह्यूज क्वांटिटी होती है सर एप्पल का जो प्लांट बनाते हैं टिश्यू कल्चर से वो बिकता है जा करके तीन साल के बाद वो एक साल डेढ़ साल में रूट बनता है उसके बाद ग्राफ्टिंग की जाती है तो ये अबाउट तीन साल के प्लांट सेल आउट तीन साल के बाद प्लांट सेल आउट होता है मार्केट में तो आ, सबसे बड़ी बात आ, ये रही कि टिश्यू कल्चर से बनाने के बाद हमारे हिमाचल प्रदेश में या जे के में जो भी प्लांट ट्रेडिशनल प्लांट थे वो प्लांट विक्रस प्लांट होता था और पंद्रह साल के बाद फ्रूट देता था पंद्रह साल के बाद फ्रूट देता था हमारे यहाँ कहावत थी कि दादा लगाएगा पोता खाएगा फ्रूट पंद्रह साल के बाद फर्स्ट वीरिंग पे आता था उसके बाद ये आ, फुल वीरिंग पे बीस पच्चीस साल के बाद आता था और प्लांट की एज भी सिक्सटी ईयर होती थी प्लांट बहुत बड़ा बिगरेस प्लांट होता था ह्यूज बड़ी लेबर की जरूरत होती थी उसमें काम करने के लिए से रूट स्टॉक बना रूट स्टॉक के ऊपर ग्राफ्टेड प्लांट हुआ तो ये हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटेशन हुआ और विद इन टू ईयर प्लांट फ्रूटिंग आता है तीन साल का प्लांट हम नर्सरी से देते हैं टिश्यू कल्चर से बनाते हैं रूट किया जाता है और 
जितना भी रूट स्टॉक प्रोड्यूस करते हैं तो उसको हम वी आर सर्टिफाइड फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एन नेशनल सर्टिफिकेशन सिस्टम फॉर टिश्यू कल्चर प्लांट तो जो भी हम प्लांट बनाते हैं कराते हैं उसके बाद वो मार्केट में सेल किया जाता है तो ऑल प्लांट वायरस फ्री और डिजीजेज फ्री होता है तो विद इन टू ईयर विद इन टू ईयर ये फ्रूटिंग पे आ जाता है प्लांट और हाई डेंसिटी प्लांटेशन पहले अगर हम एक एकड़ की बात करेंगे तो पहले एक एकड़ में 100 से 120 प्लांट लगते थे लेकिन अब एक एक एकड़ में हाई डेंसिटी में 1000 प्लांट अबाउट 1000 प्लांट लगता है और लोगों को इससे बहुत अच्छा रेवेन्यू जनरेट हुआ हमारे हिमाचल के फार्मर जो या पंज, या हमारे कश्मीर के फार्मर थे उनको खर्चे इतने थे ट्रेडिशनल क्रॉप में कि खर्चे मुश्किल से पूरा करना मुश्किल होता था अगर वो कोई कोई पांच लाख रुपए का सेब बेचता था तो उसके चार लाख रुपए खर्चे थे क्योंकि प्लांट बड़े हो गए थे बूढ़े हो गए थे तो उसको स्प्रे कटिंग प्रूनिंग ये वो बहुत खर्चे बहुत थे तो हाई डेंसिटी पे जब लोग गए तो लोगों को बहुत बेनिफिट हुआ और आज की डेट में अगर आप बहुत सारे यूट्यूब के एप्पल के फार्मर बहुत अच्छे रेट में सौ रुपए किलो डेढ़ सौ रुपए किलो दो सौ रुपए किलो तक अपने बगीचे से ही बहुत टॉप क्वालिटी के फ्रूट बेच रहे हैं जिससे हमारे जे के के फार्मर हिमाचल के उत्तराखंड के अरुणाचल के ये सब फार्म बहुत जनरेट हुई है और हमें बहुत खुशी होती है एक ये खुद को अपने को लगता है कि हम इतना अच्छा क्वालिटी प्लांटिंग मटेरियल प्रोवाइड करा रहे लो, हैं लोगों को किस वजह से कि हम टिश्यू कल्चर से ये प्लांटिंग मटेरियल बना रहे हैं तो इतना अच्छा क्वालिटी प्लांटिंग मटेरियल लोगों को प्रोवाइड करा रहे हैं साथ में सत्तर अस्सी लोगों को रोजगार भी दे रखा है तथा साथ में जो लोग आ, हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं बहुत सारे लोग जो फार्मर प्लांट्स लेते हैं उनका भी रेवेन्यू बहुत जो जो पहले मुश्किल से एक लाख रुपए कमाता था आज वो दस लाख से ज्यादा पैसे कमा रहा है उतने ही एरिया में तो टिश्यू कल्चर से ये बेनिफिट हुए हैं तो एप्पल के साथ साथ हम पियर पलम चेरी वगैरह के ऊपर भी टिश्यू कल्चर से काम कर रहे हैं हमारा फ्यूचर प्लानिंग साथ के साथ अभी हम रजत निशांत बैठक कैलिफोर्निया से यूएसए से कुछ नया जिनेवा सीरीज आ रहा है तो जिनेवा सीरीज इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं साथ में वालनट और एलिमेंट के रूट स्टॉक भी इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो तो वो कल्चर हम इम्पोर्ट करके यहाँ पे खुद मल्टीप्लाई करते हैं तो सबसे बड़ी बात से हमारी भारत सरकार बात करती है स्वदेशी अपनाओ तो सबसे बड़ी बात है कि अगर हम स्वदेशी यहाँ पे इंडिया में ही ये सब प्लांट बनाएंगे ओनली एप्पल का नहीं सभी वरायटी टिश्यू कल्चर के माध्यम से डॉक्टर साहब ने बताया डॉक्टर शुक्ला जी ने तथा डॉक्टर नायडू जी ने बताया कि टिश्यू कल्चर से हम केला पोटैटो स्ट्रॉबेरी शुगर केन एप्पल पियर चेरी अमरूद गवा टीक के प्लांट डेट पाम का प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर से बन के आ रहा है इंपोर्ट होके और प्लांट का कॉस्ट तीन हजार चार हजार रुपए पर प्लांट का कॉस्ट है तो ये चीजें भी अगर हमारे इंडिया में बनती हैं जो हमारे नवयुवक बायोटेक्नोलॉजी में पढ़ लिख रहे हैं जो पढ़ रहे हैं और बाद में जॉब ढूंढ रहे हैं अगर वो अपना काम कुछ करेंगे अपने से रोजगार कुछ नया स्टार्ट करेंगे टिश्यू कल्चर का काम स्टार्ट करेंगे और ऐसे नई नई क्रॉप पे काम करेंगे जैसे आजकल एवोकेडो आ गया है ब्लूबेरी आ रहा है साथ में ये आपका मैंने बताया डेट पाम डेट पाम इतना प्लांट बिक रहा है मार्केट में सब इंपोर्ट होके आ रहा है और इंपोर्ट करके एप्पल में भी बहुत सारे प्लांट लोग इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं कुछ अभी भी हमारा विभाग हमारा हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट जितने प्रोजेक्ट आ रहे हैं वर्ल्ड बैंक के प्रोजेक्ट एशियन बैंक के प्रोजेक्ट गवर्नमेंट के जो प्रोजेक्ट आ रहे हैं आज भी गवर्नमेंट या प्राइवेट लोग बहुत सारा प्लांटिंग मटेरियल बाहर से इंपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो मैं तो यही कहता हूं कि स्वदेशी अपनाने के माध्यम से हमें टिश्यू कल्चर की तरफ जाना चाहिए ह्यूज मल्टीप्लीकेशन मास मल्टीप्लीकेशन तथा जब आप बनाएंगे और लोगों को प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो आपको अपने आप से खुशी होगी आपको अपने आप से अच्छा लगेगा कि हम ये अच्छी चीज किसानों को दे रहे हैं और जिससे आपको खुशी भी होगी तथा इनकम भी आपकी 
और जैसे हमारे इम्पोर्ट प्राइवेट लोग प्लांट आज भी इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं लेकिन फिर भी प्लांट क्वारंटाइन एक फॉर्मलिटी एक जो रहता है कि हमारे को प्लांट इम्पोर्ट करने के बाद प्लांट क्वारंटाइन करना है एक साल के लिए लोग डायरेक्ट बेच रहे हैं उसको लाते हैं विदाउट क्वारंटाइन रख के बेच रहे हैं वायरस बीमारियां जो आएंगी विदेशों से वो हमारे बगीचों में हमारे भारत भर्ष की धरती पे ये जो फैल जाएंगी तो इससे बाद में बहुत सारी दिक्कतें आएंगी जैसे हमारे यहाँ हिमाचल प्रदेश में डिस्ट्रिक्ट सोलन में राजगढ़ एक बेल्ट है जहां पर पीच आड़ू की बहुत अच्छी खेती होती थी लेकिन ऐसे इंपोर्टेड प्लांट आए में वायरस कर दिया और आड़ू में बहुत सारा प्रॉब्लम आया ऐसे ही बाकी क्रॉप में भी मैं बोलता हूँ कि अगर इम्पोर्ट कर रहे हैं साल क्वारंटाइन की जो फॉर्मलिटी है जो उसकी देख रेख है एक साल क्वारंटाइन में रखना है उसको उसको जरूर रखना चाहिए और उसमें क्वारंटाइन विभाग को तथा हमारे इंडियन नर्सरी ग्रोअर एसोसिएशन को भी इसमें सचेत होना चाहिए कि जो लोग ऐसा गलत काम कर रहे हैं उनके ऊपर हम कुछ रोक करें यथा उन, उन चीजों से बचे तो मैं आ, सभी नवयुवकों से आज के जो इस वीडियो को देख रहे हैं वो तो हैं ही इस फील्ड से जुड़े हुए लेकिन बाकी भी आज के नवयुवक जो पढ़ाई लिखाई करने के में पढ़ रहे हैं या हॉर्टिकल्चर में स्टडी कर रहे हैं या एग्रीकल्चर में स्टडी कर रहे हैं तो खुद का अपना ओन काम करें अपना काम करें अपना नर्सरी का काम करें अपना टिश्यू कल्चर का काम करें अपना हाइड्रोपोनिक्स का काम करें अपना एरोपोनिक्स का काम करें तो उससे बहुत अच्छी इनकम जनरेट कर सकते हैं तो ये टिश्यू कल्चर एक ऐसा जैसे डॉक्टर साहब ने बताया कि आ, मैं भी सुन के हैरान हो गया 500 मिलियन प्लांट डॉक्टर शिव कांसुकुला जी ने बताया कि एनुअली हम पूरे इंडिया में प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं जिसमें 70 परसेंट बनाना बनाते हैं तो बाकी क्रॉप्स के ऊपर भी यही ऐसे ही बड़ा काम किया जा सकता है डिमांड बहुत बड़ी है प्लांट्स की डिमांड आने वाले कई सालों तक ये प्लांट की डिमांड खत्म नहीं हो सकती जैसे हम एप्पल बनाते हैं तो 25 से 30 साल उस प्लांट की लाइफ रहती है 25-30 साल तक पूरी एरिया नहीं भर जाएगा तब तक रिपीट दोबारा से डिमांड वो प्लांट कटेंगे तो दोबारा से प्लांट लगेंगे वैसे ही बनाना में है बनाना दो साल में दूसरे साल फ्रूट दे देता है तो वो प्लांट कटते हैं तो अगली नर्सरी लगती है तो प्लांट की डिमांड कभी खत्म नहीं होने वाली है सिर्फ इस दिशा में काम करने की ज्यादा जरूरत है और सबसे बड़ी बात कि स्वदेशी अपनाओ जो बात है हम इंडिया के लोग इंडिया में ये प्लांट बनाएंगे इंपोर्ट करे करेंगे लेकिन सिर्फ टेक्नोलॉजी या मेन मदर कल्चर या मदर स्टॉक मदर प्लांट कि ऐसा नहीं कि लाखों प्लांट आप इंपोर्ट करें सिर्फ मदर स्टॉक या मदर कल्चर इंपोर्ट करें जिसको आगे मल्टीप्लाई करें तथा उससे बहुत सारे आ, हमारे देश की हमारे प्रदेश की जैसे हमारे हिमाचल प्रदेश में एप्पल का काम हो रहा है हमारे प्रदेश की आपके जैसे गर्म एरियो में बनाना का काम हो रहा है या सुगर केन का काम हो रहा है तो वहां की तरक्की होगी जिससे हमारा देश समृद्ध होगा तो मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं डॉक्टर शिवकांत शुक्ला जी का डॉक्टर नायडू जी का और प्रेसिडेंट वाई पी सिंह जी का तथा डॉक्टर चटर्जी जी का जिन्होंने मेरे साथ कॉन्टेक्ट किया और बहुत जल्दी शॉर्ट टर्म में ये प्रोग्राम सेट हुआ मेरा मैं भी कहीं आउट ऑफ स्टेशन में आपको कोई स्लाइड नहीं दिखा पा रहा हूं क्योंकि मेरा लैपटॉप में थोड़ा टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है आप मुझे विजिट कर सकते हैं डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट रजत बायोटेक डॉट कॉम एप्पल के प्लांट्स के लिए हम हॉट एरिया के लिए भी एप्पल प्लांट्स बनाते हैं और कोल्ड एरिया के लिए तो बनाते ही है तो मेरा ये जो सजेशन मैंने बोला आने वाले तो नवी उसको फॉलो करें धन्यवाद नमस्कार थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर विलोद जी आपका जो स्टोरी मैंने देखा है कि बहुत ही इंस्पायरिंग स्टोरी है आपका फील्ड अलग था आपने फील्ड 2005-6 में शिफ्ट किया है एंड यू वांट टू डू समथिंग डिफरेंट जहाँ से आपको ये टिश्यू कल्चर और ये हॉर्टिकल्चर का विदाउट एनी बैकग्राउंड यू आर एंटर इन दिस फील्ड एंड यू आर डूइंग वेरी नाइसली सो आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर ऑल यूर एंडिवर्स thank you very much for thank sponsoring you, this sir. today's thank webinar so thanks to rajat thanks to rajat nishan biotech thank you very much sir now we are with us mr sanjay wyal founder and ceo ishwat biotech private limited he is an mba in international business he has a wide experience of 70 years in the field of biotech so i welcome mr sanjay wyal sir and i request him 
to give his presentation. So over to you, Sanjay, sir. Sanjay, sir, are you able to listen to me? Manjuji, I'm audible. Manjuji, I'm audible. Uh, Sachin sir, I think he's not in the room, Zoom room. Maybe he's not reachable due to his network issues. Okay, okay, okay. All right, sir. Uh, Sachin sir, can we start the question answer round if we can? Just, just I will check him whether he's there or not. Just all right, just all right, sir. All right. Sir. I think uh, Mr. Sanjay is not able to join us in today's webinar. So we can we continue with, with this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Today, today we have with three speakers now. Uh, so uh, I request all the participants, those who have any question to our speakers, they are free to ask. So is there any question from the participants? मैं सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स से रिक्वेस्ट करता हूं हमारे स्पीकर्स के जो हमारे एक्सपर्ट्स है ऑन टिश्यू कल्चर एंड इट्स फ्यूचर किसी को टिश्यू कल्चर और इस फ्यूचर के बारे में सेशन के बारे में कोई क्वेश्चंस हो तो दे आर फ्री टू आस्क आवर स्पीकर्स हेलो एवरीवन आई एम रेक्सा टांडक सिंजन टामे मैं एज अ रिसर्च एसोसिएट काम करती हूं तो आ, हम लोगों को सबको पता है टिश्यू कल्चर एंड उसका मतलब फ्यूचर भी पता है बट सर वो होता है ना कि जब आ, मतलब हम लोग अभी यंग है हम लोगों को यही डायरेक्शन नहीं मिल रहा है कि अगर नर्सरी स्टार्ट करना है तो फ्रॉम वेयर टू स्टार्ट व्हाट आर द रिसोर्सेस वी नीड और कैसे मतलब कौन से पार्ट से या डायरेक्शन से जाना चाहिए तो वैसे ही सेम टिश्यू कल्चर के लैब का लैब के लिए भी है कि इट इज टू एक्सपेंसिव तो फंड कहाँ से मिलेगा फिर उसका मतलब आगे जो भी उसका प्रोसेस होता है वो क्लियर नहीं है तो फिर इसके वजह से ना बहुत सारे जो आइडियाज रहते हैं वो वहीं पे स्टॉप हो जाते हैं तो वो वो चीज के लिए गाइडेंस अगर मिलता है तो फिर वो बेनिफिशियल होगा सोनी सर कैन यू गाइड अस ऑन दिस रिगार्ड्स बिकॉज़ यू हैव टेकन द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ दिस यस यस सर यस सर हां प्लीज आई कैन आई प्लीज प्लीज अगर मैं बोलूँ मैडम जो बात कर रहे थे अगर ये नर्सरी का काम करना चाहते हैं अगर नर्सरी का काम करना चाहते हैं तो सबसे पहले आपको क्रॉप डिसाइड करनी पड़ेगी कि आप कौन सी प्लांट उगाना चाहते हैं हमारे लाखों किस्मों के प्लांट हैं अगर आप मान लो एप्पल के ऊपर काम करना चाहते हैं या मान लो आप पोमोग्रेनेट के ऊपर काम करना चाहते हैं गवावा के ऊपर काम करना चाहते हैं किसी भी क्रॉप के ऊपर या दो तीन क्रॉप के ऊपर तो आप सुन रहे हैं मेरे को हाँ सर आप बात कीजिए बात कीजिए सर हाँ जिस क्रॉप के ऊपर काम करना चाहते हैं नर्सरी में तो आपको सबसे पहले मदर प्लांट लेना है कहीं से भी मदर प्लांट कहाँ से लेना है ऑथेंटिक सोर्स चाहिए आपको कहीं गवर्नमेंट का कोई यूनिवर्सिटी है या कोई गवर्नमेंट हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट का विभाग में कोई अच्छा आपको जेनुअन मटेरियल मिलता है या कोई अच्छी बायोटेक्नोलॉजी लेबोरेटरी से जहाँ पे वायरस फ्री मटेरियल मिलता है उसका मदर उससे मदर प्लांट ले, आपको मिनिमम 25 प्लांट पर वैरायटी जैसे आप गुआवा का काम कर रहे हैं तो गुआवा में मान लो ललित है या इलाहाबादी सफेदा है या कोई सी भी वैरायटी है या आप सिट्रस में काम कर रहे हैं नेटल है विल्सन है या जा, जाफा वैरायटी है ब्लड रेड है कोई सी भी वैरायटी का एक वैरायटी का आपको मिनिमम 25 प्लांट चाहिए 
जो आपको मदर स्टॉक लगाना है पहले अपनी कहीं जमीन में तो आफ्टर थ्री ईयर आप उसको हॉर्टिकल्चर जो हमारे हिमाचल प्रदेश का सिस्टम है आफ्टर थ्री ईयर आप उसको हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट से नर्सरी रजिस्टर्ड करवा सकते हैं फिर आपका आप अगर आपके पास ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव प्लांट हैं दो तीन चार वरायटियों के उस वरायटी का आपको नर्सरी रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट में नाइनटीन जो एक्ट है उसमें आपका नर्सरी रजिस्टर्ड हो जाएगा उसके बाद आपको उसमें काम करना है प्लांटिंग मटेरियल बनाना है कोई बहुत ज्यादा एक्सपेंसिव काम नहीं है नर्सरी का आप मदर प्लांट लगाने के लिए पैसा लगाना पड़ेगा उसके बाद आपको लैंड चाहिए रोड चाहिए पानी चाहिए बिजली चाहिए और लेबर चाहिए तो फिर आप प्लांटिंग मटेरियल बना सकते हैं और मार्केट में आजकल ऑनलाइन सिस्टम है बेच सकते हैं कैसे अगर आपको टिश्यू कल्चर लेबोरेटरी लगाना अगर आप चाहते हैं तो सबसे पहले आपको टेक्निकली नो हाउ होना चाहिए जैसे आप इस इस फील्ड में आपको स्टडी होनी चाहिए या फिर आपको इस जैसे हम मैंने तो बायोटेक्नोलॉजी में कुछ भी स्टडी नहीं किया था मेरी पढ़ाई कोई बायोटेक्नोलॉजी में नहीं है लेकिन धीरे 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 करके थोड़ा सा ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम किया आईएचबीटी पालमपुर से सीएसआईआर से प्लस कहीं थोड़े दिन में जॉब किया बहुत पुरानी बात है पंद्रह साल पहले की तो हमने उसको धीरे धीरे सीख लिया और कर लिया लेकिन अगर आप पढ़े लिखे हैं उस लाइन में तो आप आजकल ये एन नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड में फिफ्टी का प्रोविजन है फिफ्टी इंसेंटिव नेशनल हॉर्टिकल्चर बोर्ड देता है अदरवाइज आपको हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ आपका स्टेट जैसे आप मान लो हिमाचल के पंजाब के हरियाणा के कहीं से भी हैं वहां से भी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट वो भी आपको 50 परसेंट इंसेंटिव देता है टिश्यू कल्चर लेबोरेटरी लगाने के लिए आप स्टार्टिंग में बहुत बड़े लार्ज स्केल पे मत जाइए छोटी लेबोरेटरी लगाइए आप फिफ्टी लाख की थर्टी लाख रुपीज की जिसमें आपकी कैपेसिटी दो लाख पांच लाख प्लांट हो आप धीरे धीरे अगर करेंगे तो बहुत अच्छा कर पाएंगे लेकिन डिपेंड करता है कि आपको कौन सा क्रॉप का एक काम करना है सबसे पहले उसको आपको डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा और कोई क्वेश्चन अगर आप पूछना चाहते हैं तो गर्म एरिया में भी लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा अगर आप उसे एक्सेप्ट करेंगे की बहुत ज्यादा इनकम आएगी तो वैसा नहीं होगा क्योंकि हमारा जो पहाड़ का एप्पल है हमारे हिमाचल प्रदेश में या जे एंड के में जो कोल्ड रीजन में एप्पल होता है उसका कॉस्ट बहुत अच्छा मिलता है हंड्रेड रुपीज हंड्रेड फिफ्टी रुपीज हंड्रेड एट्टी रुपीज पर के जी लेकिन उसका कॉस्ट क्यों मिलता है उसका सेल्फ लाइफ रहता है अगर आप फ्रूट को तोड़ने के बाद टेबल पर रख देंगे एक महीना तब भी वो खराब नहीं होता लेकिन जो हॉट एरिया वाला जो एप्पल है अगर तोड़ने के बाद आपने इमीजिएट कंज्यूम करना पड़ेगा वो हार्वेस्टिंग के बाद इमीजिएट कंज्यूम करना पड़ेगा या उसको आप प्रोसेसिंग में लेके आएंगे तो आप अच्छा पैसा कमा सकते हैं अदरवाइज आप फ्रेश फ्रूट एकदम से बेच रहे हैं तब तो पैसा कमा सकते हैं लेकिन उसका सेल्फ लाइफ नहीं रहता है जो हॉट एरिया में होता है जूसी है क्रिस्पी है मीठा भी है सब कुछ है लेकिन साइज भी बनता है कलर इतना अच्छा नहीं बनता दो ही प्रॉब्लम है कलर इतना अच्छा नहीं बनता नंबर दो की सेल्फ लाइफ कम है बाकी कॉमर्शियल इसको कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर एक क्वेश्चन तो इनका था कि देर आर हाउ मेनी वराइटी फॉर हॉट एरिया हॉट एरिया के लिए चार मेन वराइटी है सर आज की डेट में इंडिया में जो अच्छी चल रही है जैसे अन्ना है नंबर एक है अन्ना जो रेड कलर में होता है और yes. दूसरा है डॉरसेट गोल्डन डॉरसेट गोल्डन जो है वो गोल रहता है और गोल्डन कलर का होता है ये बेसिकली फ्रांस की वराइटियां थी जो हिमाचल प्रदेश हॉर्टिकल्चर डिपार्टमेंट ने इम्पोर्ट किया था एक थर्ड वरायटी है एच आर एम एन नाइनटी नाइन जो हिमाचल प्रदेश के एक फार्मर ने खुद मल्टीप्लाई करके रिसर्च करके बना ओके ग्रेट हेलो ये जो हरमन नाइनटी नाइन एच आर एम एन नाइनटी नाइन 
ये हिमाचल प्रदेश के एक ग्रोअर ने खुद कुछ मल्टीप्लाई ये ग्राफ्टिंग इधर से उधर करके कुछ रिसर्च करके एक आम फार्मर ने वो बनाई थी और चौथी वरायटी है सर ट्रॉपिक स्वीट जो ऑस्ट्रेलिया की वरायटी है तो ये चार वरायटी हैं जो अच्छा बिल्कुल गर्म एरिया में आपको कर्नाटका में महाराष्ट्र में दिल्ली में हरियाणा में जहां मर्जी आप लगाएंगे ये फ्रूट देती है सर ये ये दीज आर स्वीट स्वीट इन टेस्ट नॉट नॉट मोर स्वीट सर लेकिन बहुत अच्छा है मतलब स्वीट है थोड़ा सा खट्टापन रहता है उसमें जूसी है हल्का सा खट्टापन आता है लेकिन बहुत स्वीट आप बोलेंगे उतना नहीं है लेकिन स्वीट है Very good. Good. Very good. Haan, Thank you, sir. My next question is about garlic. Are you doing any टिश्यू कल्चर फॉर गार्लिक the big uh, cloves of garlic is uh, uh, is uh, we get it by tissue culture removing uh, in India the the garlic cloves are very small and uh, and the reason is a virus. Uh, in in the garlic so we have cleared the virus and then we get big uh, a big uh, kya bolte hai usko uh, garlic bade uh, bade uske uh, uh, this do you understand what ki ki wo yes, garlic yes, yes, virus saaf karke aap kuch aisa kaam kiya hai sir garlic mein अभी तक हमने कोई काम नहीं किया टिश्यू कल्चर में अदरवाइज हमारे जो हिमाचल में जो पहाड़ के ठंडे एरिए में जो गार्लिक होता है हमारे यहाँ डिस्ट्रिक्ट सिरमौर में डिस्ट्रिक्ट सोलन में बहुत गार्लिक उगाते हैं लोग इतना उगाते हैं कि हज मतलब सैकड़ों ट्रक लोग उगाते हैं एक एक घर में आपको पांच सौ पांच सौ किलो क्या पांच पांच हजार किलो भी लोग उगाते हैं और सारा ये कर्नाटका और वहां बिकता है जाकर के केरला में और कर्नाटका में सब यहाँ से चला जाता है और बहुत मोटा उसका जो आप बोल रहे हैं ना इतना उसका जो बल्लभ होता है वो बहुत मोटा होता है और बहुत अच्छा वो गार्लिक है लेकिन वायरस फ्री बोलेंगे ऐसा नहीं है ना ही टिश्यू कल्चर पे अभी काम हुआ है इस पे हमारे अच्छा। यहाँ पे हिमाचल प्रदेश में कोई काम नहीं वो वो बोली की मतलब था कि वो जो हम मराठी में बोलते हैं पाकली उसकी गार्लिक की बड़ी बड़ी गुंठी गुंठी हाँ। गुंठी हम बोलते हैं बहुत मोटी होती है सर वो और पूरे बल्लभ में मुश्किल से पांच छह गुंठियां होती हैं लेकिन काफी मोटी मोटी होती है जो पॉल्टी बोलते हैं आप तो ये हमारे यहाँ ठंडे एरिए में बहुत उगता है सर बहुत कॉमर्शियल इसकी क्रॉप होती है एप्पल लगाते हैं एप्पल के नीचे जो एक खारली एरिया रहता है उसमें पूरे में गार्लिक होता है और वो बहुत बिकता है सर और वो सारा साउथ में कर्नाटका वगैरह में बिकता है सर ज्यादा आप आप आपका ईमेल व्हाट्सएप अपना चैट में लगा दो जैसे इफ यू हैव एनीबडी हैज क्वेश्चंस वी कैन आस्क यू बाय ईमेल एंड आप मेरे को रजत बायोटेक इंडिया पे सर्च करेंगे तो मैं मिलूंगा सर रजत बायोटेक सोनी सर चैट में डाल दीजिए प्लीज ओके ओके सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन सोनी साहब आपने वो सवाल उठाया था अपना अवोकाडो के बारे में सो आजकल बहुत डिमांड है और आप इसमें कुछ लगे हुए हैं क्या मैं एबोकेडो पे नहीं कर रहा हूं सर एबोकेडो बेसिकली सीड से उगा रहे हैं ऊपर ग्राफ्टिंग कर रहे हैं लेकिन डिमांड right. जो है बेसिकली ब्लूबेरी की हमने ऑस्ट्रेलिया में देखा सर तो ब्लूबेरी बहुत होता है और सबसे कॉमर्शियल क्रॉप है पंद्रह से दो रुपए किलो बिक जाता है उसका फ्रूट तो right. ब्लूबेरी का बहुत बड़ा फ्यूचर है सिर्फ कोल्ड एरिया में नहीं हॉट एरिया में भी होता है सर ब्लूबेरी तो right. uh, और और ये डेट पाम सर डेट पाम भी राजस्थान में बहुत हो रहा है सर तो इसका बहुत कमर्शियल होने वाला है आने वाले टाइम में कर सकते हैं मतलब इसमें अच्छा पैसा कमा सकते हैं right. और एवोकेडो हो रहा है लेकिन उसकी जो बल उसकी जो गुठली होती है सर सीड जो होता है उसी से उसको चिलिंग कर करके उसके उससे उगा करके उसके ऊपर ग्राफ्टिंग करते हैं तो आराम से दो तीन सौ रुपए का प्लांट मिल रहा है आजकल सीडलिंग वाला लेकिन वो अच्छा प्लांट होता है सर हाँ मेरा मेरा क्वेश्चन है कि आ, अपने अवोकाडो के रूट स्टॉक इंडिया में मिलता नहीं है क्यों वो क्वारंटाइन डिपार्टमेंट का बहुत ये होता है प्रॉब्लम तो आप कुछ कर सकते हैं कि दूसरी कोई नर्सरी बनाती है रूट स्टॉक की क्यों इज़राइल में अभी वो चल रहा है रूट स्टॉक का टिश्यू कल्चर प्लांट बन रहा है सो क्या मे भी होगा तो बहुत अच्छा होगा फार्मर्स के लिए कि अभी ये पावरफुल समझ रहा है अवोकाडो तो सबको चाहिए 
एवोकाडो में काम किया जाए तो बहुत अच्छा ये हाई बहुत अच्छी क्रॉप है फूड वैल्यू ज्यादा है सर इसमें तो लोग विदेशों में बहुत खाते हैं और फूड वैल्यू बहुत अच्छा है अगर काम करें इसमें तो अच्छा रहेगा लेकिन अभी तक हमने कोई काम नहीं किया है ट्राइब में है हम जैसे अभी हम वॉलनेट और एलिमेंट के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं तो आने वाले टाइम में ब्लू और ये एवोकेडो या डेट पाम के ऊपर कुछ कर सकते हैं शायद उसके लिए या फिर कोई भी दूसरी कंपनी भी कोई अच्छा काम कर सकती है लेकिन इसमें फ्यूचर है सर आने वाले टाइम में विल यू बी इंटरेस्टेड टू इंपोर्ट सीड मटेरियल ऑफ टिश्यू कल्चर प्लांट्स ऑफ फ्रूट स्टॉक ऑफ एवोकेडो सर यस सर अभी तो नहीं सर अच्छा शुक्ला सर Yes, please. Ah, uh, Shukla sir, there is one question from uh, Raksha Chandak Madam. Okay. At what temperature synthetic seed can store, and what will be the effect of regeneration of that seed after keeping for long term? Actually, let me tell you very frankly, synthetic seed is not viable in the field. So far, it has not been commercialized. because it is very less germination and type of contamination when you are transplanting in the field this could be the good topic for the research but if if you are thinking about the commercialization future of agriculture so this technology has been discussed two decade before but till now it has not been commercialized if it would have been commercialized This this has the potential to replace the micro propagation. Because look, in tissue culture, we know that we know that the main problem is logistic and perishability. We will make plants, we will store them, it will be difficult. If it is overage, then the plantation will be difficult. And here, in one place to another place, there is a lot of transportation costs. If synthetic seed is successful, then the whole problem is solved. But unfortunately, this is not the case. But unfortunately, this is not the case. सक्सेस हुआ नहीं है और थोड़ा चांसेस कमी है क्योंकि जो हम इसको इनकेप्सुलेट करते हैं वो एक वाइबर टेक्नोलॉजी के नई बन गया है जो हम एक नेचुरल सीड की तरह उसको यूज करें सिंथेटिक सीड को तो ये मेरा समीसनीय है क्वेश्चन के लिए बाकी एक रिसर्च का एस्पेक्ट है अलग अलग एंगल है उसे आप डिस्कस आउट कर सकते हैं सेपरेट फॉरम पे वेरी ट्रू सर वेरी ट्रू एक अवकॉडो पे आई आई कैन गिव वन इंफॉर्मेशन बिकॉज डे टू डे बेसिस आई एम डीलिंग विद मेनी कंपनीज Uh, there is one company in Bihar. Uh, his name is Hecure Life Science. That company has started doing avocado. If someone is interested, I can connect later on. Uh, they can write to me. I have given my email ID in the chat box. I can connect with that company. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Thank you. So today we have a very great session on uh, tissue culture and its future. There was a good discussion with the participants and the speakers. Speakers has guided very nicely to all the participants. So on behalf of Indian Nursery Men Association, I am very thankful to our today's speaker, Dr. Naidu sir, Mr. Vinod Soni sir from Russia Disha Biotech. Thank you, sir. Dr. Shivkant Shukla, sir, for guiding his. Thank you. So I am very thankful to all the speakers. I am thankful to all the participants who have joined us in our 41st webinar, organized by Indian Nursery Men Association. I am thankful to my our president, Mr. Y P Singh, who is always encouraging these webinars. I am thankful to our secretary, Mr. Mukul Tagi Sir. i'm thankful to all the members of indian nursery men association i personally thankful to our coordinator mr deepak chatterjee who is taking lot of efforts for doing these webinars i'm thankful to 
Mr. Manjit Singh Visayal and Alamkira Pandeji for taking a lot of efforts in these webinars. And my special thanks to our today's sponsor, Rashad Nishad Biotech and our online outreach partner, Nursery Live. So thank you all once again on behalf of Indian Nursery Men Association and see you in the next webinar on 27th of March on Tissue Culture and its Future Chapter 2. So till then, have a great week, week ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you all.